Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Tom Cats to Tree. I'm Whitney and welcome back to another Sunday Sew Along. It's been just a bit since we've done any Sew Alongs because I did Vlogmas on Sundays throughout December. Um, but yeah, we're back with another Sew Along. Happy New Year. <laughs> All right, so this go around, we're gonna be doing the Itch to Stitch Foz Top, which is a knit um, cardigan slash top pattern uh, that comes with the full bust or standard bust. Um, and also, I can't, oh, yes, a couple of different <laughs> sleeve options. I'm like, I think it's got a, yeah, a, I've got the, my computer down here so I can look at all of the, you know, bits and bobs here of the pattern. Long sleeve or short sleeve, depending on where you're living. I um, was a pattern tester for this one and I typically wear mine more as like a top, but it's very uh, on trend and current to wear your cardigans buttoned up and tuck them like a top. Of course, you could always, um, unbutton them and wear them more as a cardigan, which is the beauty of this pattern. Now I've had a lot of requests on doing a sew along where I'm just using my serger and cover stitch because I do sew that way quite a bit. Um, you can do all of these steps on the sewing machine and this pattern actually walks you through exactly how to do things with a, with a sewing machine. So don't feel like you have to have either of those machines. Um, and I'll kind of briefly, I'll kind of talk you through like, okay, I'm surging the seam. You know, if you're using a sewing machine, you would just go through with a stretch stitch. So I will talk through a little bit, but I'm gonna be doing this entire um, sew along on my serger and then finishing off my um, hems and all that kind of stuff on my cover stitch machine. So um, yeah, that's how I made this when I did the um, original test and how I'm gonna be doing this one as well. Okay, fabric. Now, the pattern calls for light to medium weight knit with good recovery. You need at least 50% um, stretch in this one. And she suggests cotton spandex jersey or poly spandex jersey. I mean, honestly, I think I would st stay away from maybe your rayon jerseys unless you're using like a Ponte with good stretch just because rayon tends to drape and you, I, you wouldn't necessarily want drape in this pattern. Now, I have made this in a waffle knit and it works beautifully in a waffle knit. So basically any knit that has at least 50% stretch, you're probably good to go. But um, like any kind of sweater knit or anything like that, um, I would just watch drape. You just don't want something too drapey just because this does need a little bit of body, especially because there are um, snaps or buttons. That being said, this is a V-neck top and can very easily be just pulled. In fact, I don't ever undo the snaps on my other one. I just pull it over my head and wear it as is. So you could make these non-functioning buttons or um, snaps just to sew the placket together and then, you know, sew on some buttons or put in some snaps or whatever and make them non-functioning if you didn't, if you would never wear this as a cardigan. Now I am going to be making these functioning buttonholes. I'm actually going to be doing buttonholes on this one with buttons. Um, to show you how to do that if that's something that is of, of interest to you. But while it is interface, that area, um, I would definitely use a knit with a little bit more body. Okay, also you're gonna need some interfacing. My favorite interfacing, it's the same interfacing I used for my other one, is um, Palmer Pletch, their um, Perfect Fuse uh, So Sheer, their Sheer um, interfacing. It is not a knit interfacing, it is not a Trico interfacing, it's just a sheer interfacing. And so it's just real lightweight. And I find that that has worked really well for my other one. And I've got like snaps, so it's getting pulled apart and stuff and it works great. So I, that's what I'll be using for mine as well. Again, I'll leave it linked down below if you're interested in having a look at that. All right, other than that, um, it calls for six three-eighths of an inch snaps or six three-eighths of an inch buttons. And I'll show you the buttons that I'll be using here in just a second. Uh, and then she does recommend some um, fusible stay tape. I love the So Keezy. Um, I use their woven stay tape. This is to go into the shoulders of the uh, cardigan, just keeps them from stretching out. It works really, really well. So other than that, you know, that's kind of everything we need to know. Now, this pattern comes in, or fits sizes um, bust from a 31 and an eighth of an inch up to the full, hold on here, up to 63 inch bust. So um, it's, a, it's in her full wide size range, um, which is great. And again, it has a standard bust and a full bust. I will be making the size eight with the full bust. That is my typical size with her patterns. Um, and I'll be shortening the sleeves by an inch. 
also something I have to do with her stuff. <laughs> Just because I'm short. I'm only 5'2". So um, let me show you what I'm going to be using for the pattern and then we will go over to the cutting board and I'll just kind of walk you through the pieces um, and that sort of thing so you can kind of see. All right, for my fabric, I am going to be using, this is going to be a piece that's in my winter capsule and I talked about it a little bit in that um, plans video, but this is a beautiful cotton spandex jersey and I think it's called Coral. This is from June and Lou fabrics. I will leave the fabric linked down below, uh, but it's just a beautiful cotton jersey. It's a nice weight. It's got beautiful recovery, beautiful stretch, and I'm excited to have this kind of pinky corally color in my um, capsule because, I mean, these are kind of the colors I'm working with on my shirt here. <laughs> um, and I just don't have a lot of pink in my closet, and I call this pink. It's like a coral, but um, the warm pink that I can wear, which is going into my winter capsule. So I will be using this cotton spandex jersey um, for my Foz. And then like I mentioned, I'm going to be putting in, um, well, I'll use the Palmer Pletch sheer, um, interfacing. And then for buttons, I got these from Wawak. I'll leave them linked down below. These are the natural Akoya shell buttons, but I like them. I don't know if these are going to show up at all because they're like that mother of pearl, you know, like pearlized shell button. And I thought that while they are like a uh, cream color, yeah, they have that iridescent look to them, and I think that that's going to pull really beautifully off this fabric. I don't know how I don't know how I'm going to show you that without it falling. Kind of. <laughs> I don't know how that's really working. I think they're going to be good. Um, but yes, so I've got my buttons there that I got from Wawak, and they're kind of delicate, and that's kind of what I wanted. I'm envisioning myself doing like half tucks with this shirt, um, wearing it completely out, um, maybe even wearing it as a cardigan, we'll see. Uh, and then for thread, I just use my typical Guterman Mara 100 um, in a matching color, and I'm not sure what color I'm going to choose yet, to be honest pick something out <laughs> over there. I've got a lot of, a lot of thread. So that's it. That's all that you need for this. Um, and because I am using my serger, I will be using probably gray thread in my serger. And then the far left needle, I'll be using the, um, thread that matches. And then, um, for cover stitch, I will wind a bobbin with the matching thread and I will use the thread and a bobbin for my top and then probably gray for the looper um, behind. So that's, that's just what I do. I don't buy, you know, four of the same um, threads for everything. And I do use the serger thread for most of the serging and cover stitching I do, but for the stuff that's visible, I just use my regular Guterman Mara 100 and it works fine. I've never had an issue. So that's what I will be doing. So that is kind of it going forward. Let's walk over to the um, cutting table and I will show you all of the pieces and everything that's cut out. So then we can move forward for um, um, sewing. We'll start that next week. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions down below. I'll be quick to answer those. Um, if you enjoy these type of videos, these sew alongs, these tutorials, and find them helpful, I do have a virtual tip jar. It's my coffee account. It is linked down below. And um, any money that comes through there goes right back into the channel for supplies, um, the equipment, um, lighting, all that kind of stuff, just because these tutorials and sew along type videos are more expensive to make because of the things that I have to um because I'm making something actually in the actual video. <laughs> They're just a little more costly. So yes, it all goes back to that. That's all I have for today. Very excited about my Foz. I will show you twirls because the magic of editing, you'll be able to see the finished um, garment before I even actually make it. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I have for today. I will see you all on Tuesday and again next week for another Sew Along video. Bye. Okay, let's go through all the pieces that we need um, for this Sew Along. It's going to be a pretty easy one. There's just four pieces. So um, the first one is the neckband piece. I'm going in no particular order. Actually, this is the fourth one, <laughs> but the um, neckband piece. And you're gonna cut two of these, mark your notches, but you also are supposed to cut two interfacing this line and below um, for you to support your buttonholes. And what I've done, and hopefully you can see here, is here at the top where I'm gonna fuse this to my band, I have pinked it with my pinking shears. That just makes, um, because it doesn't go all the way up to the neckband, because this part of the neckband is going to need to stretch um, just to fit nice and snug around the back of the neck. Um, it helps it from leaving just a hard line where that stops. So, you know, 
if you don't find that that's an issue, you're fine. But I did go ahead and just pinked that one edge with my pinking shears. Um, so I have two pieces of the interfacing. And again, this is the um, Palmer Pletch Perfect Fuse Shear. So this is not a knit um, uh, interfacing or anything. It's just a, a regular weft one. So that is what we've got there. So I'll be fusing those to the wrong side of each piece of that. Um, you are going to need, I've got, <laughs> I cut my son's um, corduroy pants out on my cutting table before I cut this project out and I've got little bits of blue fluff everywhere. Um, okay, the front. <clears throat> You're going to have two pieces of the front here. Um, also, when you're cutting out your neckband, if you're using the, make sure you cut out the full bust front or the standard bust front, depending on which front you're using, um, because there's two different front neckbands. So this is the full bust neckband, but there's also a standard bust neckline. So make sure you're printing or you're cutting out the right thing. So this is my front, obviously my full bust front. I've made zero alterations to this. A lot of times I will shorten itch to stitch patterns by an inch in the body, but um, my tester garment that I did of this, of the Foz, I did not. And um, yeah, I think it just kind of, it makes it just a little bit slouchier, but easier to, you know, do a half tuck and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to leave the body as is on this one. Again, this is a size eight with the um, full bust front because I have bigger than a three inch difference between my upper bust and full bust. And then we've got one back cut on the fold. Now this is the same piece for standard bust or full bust. So it even says regular or full bust here. So I've cut out one on the back here. And then sleeves. I'm doing the long sleeve version. So I have maybe two sleeves here. Now there's a sleeve for the standard bust front and a sleeve for the full bust front. So I have cut out the full bust sleeve um, and I've cut two out full length. Now I have shortened this uh, pattern piece by an inch and I shortened it here at the lengthen and shorten line. I just have short arms. Something, oh, excuse me, something I have to do <laughs> regularly. I need to take a nap. Um, regularly with itch to stitch patterns. So I just went ahead and shortened this sleeve pattern by an inch and we should be good to go there. All right, so before we end for today, I'm gonna go fuse the interfacing onto that neckband. And then I also have here with me, this is the So Keezy. Here, I'll pull this out just in case we're getting glare from the studio lights here. The So Keezy Woven Stay Tape. It's a half, in, half inch wide. I love this stuff, but I'm just going to apply um, some of this to the back shoulder uh, seam lines. I'm just going to add one on each side. I don't know which one's right side or wrong side, but obviously on the wrong side. Yeah, this is the wrong side. So I'll add a piece here and I'll add a piece on the other side of the back. Um, and it's fusible. Now you don't have to do the um, already cut, you know, stay tape. If you don't want to, you can easily cut whatever interfacing you used for the neckband. You can cut that in just a half inch wide strip um, and apply it to the back, but it really helps to keep those shoulder seams from stretching out and use a woven. You don't want it to stretch, um, which is the whole purpose of putting it there so that your um, seam, your shoulder seams don't stretch out over time. It's beautiful. It fixes a lot of things. So I'll be using this for those shoulder seams. So I am just going to um, go and fuse that interfacing to my neckband and also fuse my stay tape to the um, back shoulder seams. And I will meet you, meet you back here next week. Uh, next week we are going to put together the body of the um, cardigan and also hem it, hem the body of it because we hem it first before we add the neckband. And then the third week we'll add the neckband, hem our sleeves, and um, put in our buttonholes and buttons. So that's kind of the plan. So I will see you guys next week. Let me know if you have any questions.